board members, that all members are present, I stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Approving our agenda, we do have one one change. Two. Nope. Two. Two. The Trojan Learning Center and the contract. Okay. Yep. So changes to the agenda. We're going to add. We're going to discuss the Trojan Learning Center, and we're going to put that under nine B. And then on the consent agenda, we're gonna add approved contract for Ashlyn Anderson for vocal music. Salary would be $40,884. So with that said, um, are there any discussions on the agenda, changes to the agenda? So with the additions of those two items, I'd like to entertain a motion to approve. So moved. I'll second. Moved by Pro and second by Mahoney. Any other discussion? Hearing none, now in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. <coughs> Should I list them? I don't think, well, no, I don't think you need to. Okay. They're there. We'll move on to correspondence. Oh. What did I miss? Conflict. Conflict. Yeah. And then the consent, too. Oh, yes, sorry. What to? Yep, so I'm sorry. Next to, on the agenda is conflict of interest disclosures and waiver requests. And I have none before me. Anyone have any? All right. Next is to approve the consent agenda. And on the consent agenda is approved minutes, accept financial reports, approve claims, those without conflicts of interest, acknowledge receipt of alternative instruction application, PSE 22-4-1, accept resignation from Heather Schneider, Ashley Wernering, Amy Beeson, and Hayes Chohan. Surplus items. Um, we have more library books to declare surplus. <coughs> we need to approve our natural gas contract. And annually, we're given the opportunity to lock in natural gas rates for the next heating season. As with past years, we worked with Mr. Prohl in considering the offer. For the 21-22 school year, we agreed to a price of Point four two eight, and in our packet we have documents showing the contract price for the past 15 years. We need to approve the SDH SAA resolution, and that is our annual resolution to join. Issue contracts. We'll ask the board to authorize the issuance of contracts for classified, certified, and administration. We'll approve the ASBSD Health Insurance Participation Agreement, and this is an annual agreement to take part in the health insurance pool. We will approve the ASBSD Health Insurance Pool Adoption and Renewal, and this is an annual agreement to accept the renewal rates for health insurance. We'll approve the ASBSD Workers' Compensation Adoption and renewal, and this is an annual agreement to accept the renewal rates for workers' compensation. And we will approve the ASBSD workers' compensation participation agreement, and this is an annual agreement to take part in the workers' compensation pool. Did we already do yeah. a motion? Yeah. And then approve vocal music, but you already said that. Yep. 
And then with our addition of N, it was to approve the contract of Ashlyn Anderson for vocal music for 40,884. So hearing that, we need a motion to approve. So moved. Moved by Lisha. Second by Nebo to approve the consent agenda as read. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All the same sign. Motion carried. All right, next we'll move on to any correspondence or public commentary. All right, now we'll move on to good news items. Uh, what I have, uh, HOSA was gone just this last weekend, they took off. Um, they were gone, when was it? Uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I believe. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, did pretty well up there. CC Negabar uh, got first in community awareness with Hannah Negabar. Hannah Negabar also got third in medical law and ethics. Emma Yost got third in physical therapy, and Kenna Converse got third in medical reading. So they did a good job while they were up there. Things went well. Um, so what I got right now. All right, let's see. On the uh, elementary side, um, the student council finalized their numbers. They, they held a final four food drive that they had, kind of March Madness. I think they raised over 3,700 food items for our local food pantry that they, they donated. So uh, again, just a great event and it's neat to see everybody rally around that event. So. Um, and then just on the activity side, uh, both girls and boys basketball named their all-conference. So for boys, for LMBC, Max Scott, Cole Prunty, Caleb Weber. And then the SESD, it was Max Scott and Cole Prunty. And then on the girls' side, um, LMBC was Allison Zebart, Emma Yost, and Faith Oakley. And then the SESD was uh, Emma Yost, Allison Zebart. And then uh, we had two all-state honors in gymnastics. Uh, London Sudbeck, and then third team all state Emma Yost for basketball. Um, I think that's yeah, that's all we have on the activity side. So great, we'll move into uh, staff reports. You bet. If that's okay. I'll, uh, on the elementary side, we just completed our screening, so we screened just right at 30 preschoolers. Not all of them are school age, but uh, had a really good showing. A lot of um, a lot of families in and out. A lot of young families, which is neat, you know, for the future. It's it's uh, very stable. And then kindergarten, we have right around 15, so we'll be putting those class lists together and just getting that information out to parents so they can kind of make their decisions, um, you know, about what they want to do moving forward. So, um, otherwise, on the elementary end, so we're yeah working on class lists. Um, requisitions were all due, so we're we're kind of just working through our end of the year things and still have a. Uh, elementary counselor opening so hopefully we'll get some applications for that and, and be able to fill that position uh, on the activity side uh, just real quickly I just want to thank publicly all the the people that came to help with our track meet uh, that we held last week uh, a lot of compliments um, from from the visiting teams just the way that it ran and that uh, when they come you know we have community volunteers that are running all the events so um, and just a little note about our, our next track meet. Um, just if you do hear it or see it advertised, so we've changed instead of the, the Ethan Parks Invitational, it's now the Buck Timmons, Ethan Parks and Buck Timmons Memorial track meet. Um, and then it's going to be sponsored by the Commercial Club. So our local, so we're partnering up with the Commercial Club in town, and they're actually going to, uh, they're getting t shirts made for all the champions. And then they're going to sponsor all the events, so they're going to come and provide all the workers for that wow. event. So it's a great community partnership. Uh, I think it'll end up being a, a marquee track meet in the future here. Um, and I think we'll be getting on a team. So that's all I have, unless there's a, any questions. Explain I'm, what what is it going to be called? The Buck Memorial? Buck Timmons Memorial. Oh, yep. Okay. Who passed away? You know, this last year due to COVID, and he's a long time teacher and he's coached here in, in parks a long time. So. Well I think Buck coached all the way up until two years ago. Yeah, you, well yeah we didn't have a season last year. We didn't have a season. He, he, yeah, was, he was still volunteering here and helping yeah. our pole vaulters and that well it's all athletes anybody that you know he's just all around a great guy so um, I think it'll be very well received just in the in the yeah, track community also is a, mm -hmm. a great gesture. So. Yeah. 
So as you all know, prom uh, went very well. We had some students that really felt that it was good to get back to doing some of those things. Um, on top of that, to jump on with Mr. Yost here, we had a war we got awards night coming up, which is going to be our next big event that we got to go through. Um, we're already starting to get stuff ready for that. We're kind of compiling everything, so hopefully we can get that one going through. Um, we have FFA that's gone right now. They're up in Rapid City for their convention, and then we got FBLA that's going to be leaving next for their convention as well as FCCLA. So. We've got that convention rhythm going right now where we're sending everybody everywhere. Um, so that's kind of the busy stuff in the hallways. We're doing testing right now. I believe they started testing in the elementary. So it's empty in the hallways, but everybody's busy going through stuff. It's a it's, uh, crazy time of year. It really is, so. That's what I got. The award ceremony is the plan to be in person? Yes. Yep. Thank you. Mr. McIntosh. Um, briefly, I've been, I've been working on a number of things, including the uh, next presentation you're going to hear, and uh, focusing right now on staffing. As you heard, we have an elementary counselor position open. We have a math position open that we've had one interview for, interviewing again tomorrow for that. Um, and then we've got some summer positions, and I just was gonna let you know uh, what those would be. So the summer ESY, that's the special education component that we're required to have. That's, we have this every year. We're going to hire two. Um, the difference, there's, there's been years we've done one, but uh, we've got two that want to do it, so they essentially cut the time in half, so we're not paying anymore. That's paid uh, at a rate of $15 an hour. We have summer school learning loss. Now, if you remember, we put together a plan in our ESSER 1 application for uh, learning loss for um, students who we identify as being behind. So we're going to look to hire two to four staff, depending upon need. Mr. Yost has begun work on that. That's paid at the daily rate of pay. Our home summer school, which we have every year, uh, there's two teachers each month, June, two in June, two in July. That's paid at a daily rate of pay. Now, I, I just note that um, there's separate funding for our home, and then the summer school, of course, is paid with those federal grant dollars. So the ESY is local tax money, but that's required. And then I'm looking at three student custodians at minimum wage. So we'll be looking to, to bring those to you next month in May. Um, and then, to, to top that off, we're still trying to identify what other additional staffing needs we're, we're going to need. Um, let me back up. ESSER 3 is going to have a 20% requirement that 20% of those dollars be spent on learning loss. That's going to be about $300,000. So um, finding a way to spend that uh, effectively and efficiently. One of the ways we've, we've added a para at the colony is an example. Um, we're looking at interventionists and other strategies, but uh, we'll be bringing those ideas to you as well. But, um, so we've got to find 20% and uh, I think it's over two years, so that shouldn't be, shouldn't be a, you know, a, a huge deal. I don't think, I think we'll be able to come up with that fairly, fairly easily, I think. So that's what I've been working on. And then of course, negotiations, which you'll be talking about later. Any questions for any of the administration under staff reports? All right, hearing none. Um, next on our agenda is the HVAC system study. Damon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Welcome. Now we've worked with ACE on a number of projects over the past few years, um, since I've been here anyway. They helped us with the remodel of the locker room and of the stadium. Um, they also did a boiler project for us. I don't know if you remember that, but you did. Um, so I looked probably it up. my brother. Huh? It was probably my brother. Oh, maybe. That, that was involved with that. Okay. Form. Okay. So anyway, uh, welcome, and, and uh, the board has your your uh, present or your 
proposal or your findings, I should say. If you just okay. want to go through those for them. Uh, sure. Well, thanks for having me. Uh, David DeWitt, Associated Consulting with Canada Engineering. Uh, Shane got on me uh, this spring. We did an assessment of the systems that are in all the, the high school, the elementary, the armory, and they're all listed here. I, I went through and identified heating uh, in each area and then the HVAC in each area. Uh, I can, we can review it, read through it. Uh, okay. uh, hopefully everybody has, has, has looked at it and read it. I don't need to read, read it to you, I don't think. What would you find as the current status of that equipment, Damon? Um, well, the high school, these unit ventilators are 30 years old. The air conditioners are 20. These are approximate numbers. The elementary uh, is 20 years old. Uh, the condensing units were installed at the same time as the high school. Uh, auxiliary gym has got two air handlers that are relatively new that have you know, adequate life left in them. The armory, um, they don't run a lot, those air handlers, but you know, it would be a, a question if, if we do a project, if, if we replace those or not. Uh, relatively new boilers in two of the plants and that old Kiwami in the, on, in the armory. It's in the actual high single, school. It's in the high school here, yep. Yep, in the high school. So, uh, at this point, uh, no air conditioning in the armory or gym, or the gym, no air conditioning in the cafeteria and in the kitchen. So uh, the recommendations we come up with address that in the air conditioning to the armory, the gym, kitchen, cafeteria. Uh, we kind of looked at it two ways, whether we go back in and replace with similar systems. I don't know, unit you know, ventilators are, are quite a bit cheaper than air handlers, VABs, uh, but you sacrifice noise, filtration, that type of thing with, with the unit you know, ventilators. It's just a cheaper piece of equipment than, than air handlers and, and VABs that we use typically in our designs, in new designs. Uh, so we can go through the recommendations. to have air conditioning to your armory. We're looking at 80 to 90. And air conditioning to your gym, 70 to 80. And that's thousands. <laughs> uh, air conditioning to uh, the kitchen and cafeteria, 35 to 40. To go through the high school and essentially bring uh, the same similar systems you're looking at 294,000 the elementary is 267 to replace the old boiler with two higher efficient boilers be in that 90 to 100,000 range and the next page uh, to Upgrade, when you do this, you would upgrade all your control valves on your heating, all your thermostats. Uh, you could do a building automation you know, upgrade. As time goes on, these systems become harder and harder to get parts for. Pneumatic, I don't know that you can even get parts anymore. So we, we're running two systems. One you're familiar with, the train system that we run, but we also have a pneumatic system that's run by air. And that's the armory, and we also have a little bit shop. of the shop. A little bit of it trickles into the high school as well. So you'll hear air compressors running sometimes. That's because that's where they're running and there's leaks and whatever. And, and uh, so we've got two air compressors. We're not kind of barter for parts anymore on yeah. this pneumatic stuff. So it's, it's that time of, you know, it's going by the wayside. And 
and the train stuff is getting 20 years old in, in uh, DDC world, that's probably about the end of where they'll keep supporting that uh, system. So that would be, what you just described would be replacing what we have now with like sure. equipment. With like equipment. And we could either do it piecemeal, as you've broken down, or if they wanted, they could do the whole thing. Correct. And that would be, if I, my math's right, 1,245,000 on the high end. That's correct. That's the high numbers. The high numbers, numbers. yep. Um, on top of that, you'd also then have the engineering fees to, to put specs together and take it out to bid and all of that stuff too, which you've got a sheet showing what those costs would be as well. How 70, much does it cost? Almost 75,000, 74, 760 for the design for that one. So that's one option. That's correct. The, the other option would be, we looked at essentially going in the all new equipment that we get in the air handlers, VAVs, streets, classroom. So you'd have individual control everywhere. Um, you know, space wise, this building's a little bit challenging, uh, but we feel it, it's uh, feasible or it can be done. We would most likely put air handlers in the attic of this building. There, the elementary, that's a metal building, so it, it probably is not structurally made to carry air handlers. So most likely it would be building stands like in the corridor and putting the air handlers above that open free area in the, in the elementary. Um, two air handlers in the auxiliary gym would be reused. The armory would get new air handlers. With that, all new ceiling, because now we're going to the distribution, air distribution, and then you can see the ad for the LED lights. So you get probably go into two by two tile, LED lights throughout if you take that option. But that's kind of an all in number. Um, and that price included replacing the tiles and all that. That, that right? price includes new ceiling tiles, tiles, tiles and the general work. Well, I have 13 million. And that's a big number. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of time. I mean, there's a lot of space. So, uh, you know, that, that style, you know, change and going to that is obviously you know, yep. quite a bit more money. All right. Well, it looks like you have everything covered. Does anyone have any questions? I know I don't think we're prepared to do any um, voting on this tonight obviously with it just being presented um, but I want to throw it out and couple, see a couple things for the public if I may yep so um, one you know the, the the less expensive option is 1 point 1.25 million uh, plus probably 75,000 more for engineering costs so you're looking at 1.325 mm -hmm. um, so where's the money come from Right now, we believe our ESSER 3 allocation, which was provided, you know, for specific purposes, including uh, ventilation of schools and air distribution in schools, which this obviously is, we believe our allocation for that's going to be 1.455 million. All right, we don't have that firm yet. The department hasn't released those numbers, although. Um, there's a gentleman I know uh, at the department who gave me that number, so I, I believe it's I believe it's very accurate. We also have ESSER two money, which is six hundred and forty-seven thousand dollars. So you put the you put the two pools of money together, it's it's well over two million dollars. So um, there's there's adequate there's plenty of money to do that first option that he discussed. Obviously, the second option is going to be over three million by the time you get done. So. I don't know where you'd, you know, you'd have to find money elsewhere if you wanted to do an alternative um, option. But <clears throat> I think you guys should have take a month to think about this. Um, I think we want to get started, though, is if, if you want to do it, we should get started as soon as possible. 
How long do you think it would take to draw up uh, specs for that first option, Damon? First option, uh, we got to go ahead in, in May. Uh, we could probably get it on the street uh, late on September. Uh, it'd be, you'd be able to do some of the work um, right away, but all the classroom work you would do next next summer, not this coming summer, but the next summer after that. Uh, I'm pretty confident that a good contractor can get that done in, in the summer. If you guys have been having much trouble with getting supplied, I guess. With the uh, not so much getting supplied, but uh, you're paying a premium right now. I mean, uh, our our estimates have gone up 30 percent in the last three months. Well, and that is then my next question is how stable are the prices? Uh, it's anybody's guess right now. Uh, you know, when you're paying double for a four by eight sheet of plywood, uh, it's, yeah, the barometer is kind of fluctuated on that. I mean, I, metal has been stable up till just three, four months ago. And, pound of metal was running 65 cents and it had been for years and now it's about 20 you know so <laughs> it you know it's it's a market that no one you know no one can predict right now uh, so Shane what are our requirements um, so so he'd, he'd put specs together he'd draw them up and then there would be bid booklets and it would all go out for bid at that point uh, those numbers would come back to the board and you would consider those and uh, decide whether or not you wish to award a bid to one of the, the people who've contracted. When do we job. have to lock anyone in though for the funds is really what I was... Well, you know, that's a good question. So when, you know, I think the sooner you could get started, probably the, the, the better off you would be. Um, you know, I think May is plenty early though, considering that most of the work will probably be done next summer. But I don't think we want to be the last ones in, in, the, in line either because there's going to be other schools looking to do similar projects. So, um, you know, take, take as much time as you need, but, um, you know, let the public hear what, what you're contemplating. And uh, next month, if you could debate it some more and possibly make a decision. Uh, the next step would be to contract with ACE to do the next step of the project, which would be to begin drawing specifications for the bid booklets. And he said that's going to take them until, what did you say, until September? What I would say, say September is a, is, a, is a safe date. At which time then it would go off the bid. And then you'll have a firm number. Uh, with these numbers, you, you, you know, I think you told me that you know you you try to come in a little bit on the high side just so no boards are terribly. Well, I, you know, you, 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 hope. you have increases like we've been seeing. You, you don't know if it's stabilized yet or if it's going up. I mean, these are kind of today's numbers. So if this thing keeps rock, ratcheting up, you know, you're, you're going to have to add money to that. Do we have oh. any concern for other education buildings? Are we responsible for the our home and the learning centers those, at the colonies? Those aren't our buildings. Right. So it's, you know, I don't know how you could justify spending tax dollars or your dollars and putting it into infrastructure in those buildings. Okay. Now, I, that being said, there are other things we can do there to help. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have put air purification systems in, in, in those, but we could, you know, we could look at stepping that up as well. Okay. But I know it had come up previously. It gets a little complicated when they're not your buildings. Okay. On the uh, air conditioning in the, the armory and the multi-purpose room, is there any um, estimate of uh, increased utility fees when that installed? Um, right now, I, I estimated uh, two 20-ton units for the auxiliary gym, multi-purpose. And two 30 ton units for the armory gym. Um, yeah, you're going to see him. <laughs> um, that's 60 and 40. So it's 100 tons of air conditioning, which is a pretty close to what you can probably have in the rest of your school. So you're going to see a jump in, in electrical use. So, Shane, what would you foresee? I mean, there's that's probably more of a 
on off situation when to be in the in the armory and, and multi purpose room. I mean, yeah, I don't know. Except for when school is in use or in session, obviously. But yeah, I, I guess you know, these gyms are they're pretty busy during the summer, but they wouldn't. I don't know if they. I don't know. It'd be more effective turning them off and on, or or how to handle that. But um, yeah, I think you're right. I mean, I don't think they have to be running all the time for sure. And you can um, you can create whatever schedule that you want. If you upgrade your your, uh, you know, they'll have building automation going in there of some sort when you do those. So you can schedule it remotely. You can schedule it. Come on at six in the morning. Shut off at three o'clock um, you can you can any schedule that you want with, with the system one of the biggest challenges we have during the summer months is we will uh, shampoo carpets and things like that but yeah. the units we have a hard time getting the moisture out of the classrooms then because the AC units don't run long enough to pull them the air or the moisture out of the air is that Something that we well, should that's an inherent problem when you don't have load, and right. you know your air, your coil just doesn't stay cold long enough to to get this water out. Um, that's the beauty of the other system is you can run your your air handlers discharge air temperature down, and then do a little bit of reheat to you know bring that pull that humidity out. So the, the you know the issue in the summer these these units don't run a whole lot um, because they you know their classrooms are dormant and lights are off and there's no heat being generated other than from from the sun um, so we do see that problem in the summers they just don't run a whole lot but obviously when kids get in there and there's a load then, then they do so if you were to estimate life expectancy out of the first whole estimate I guess and then the brand new uh, the the replacing these you're going to be back at that 20 to 25 year range I mean the, the life expectancy really hasn't changed on this style of equipment uh, the air handlers and chiller you're looking at 35 to 40 year um, equipment you know, it's not to say that you can't have a problem with the chiller. You don't have a compressor go out or something, but uh, you typically see those, you know, quite a bit longer life. Is there any efficiency savings with the newer version compared to our version? Um, your chiller is going to be more uh, efficient. Um, you're not going to have, with the chiller, you're not going to have as many connected tons because you got diversity. You get to use, you have diversity. Each classroom has, this room has six, six tons of air conditioning, you add it up. Where with a chiller, you don't have to add all of your load up because when the gyms are, are full, your classrooms are empty and vice versa. See, a chiller will probably be um, two thirds to three quarters of what you add up for a condensing unit and tonnage. So your chillers, uh, doesn't have the same capacity as all your your unitaries added well, that would up. That would be the second part. That's not right. the first one. But is that why that's on there? Or just because yeah, it's yeah. needed? Do you want to explain the LED lighting and, and the, what you explained to us about the amount of heat that fluorescence put out versus LED and what that does to load? Uh, right. This room here, as an example, we would typically put 2.3 watts per square foot in the loads. Uh, if it's a thousand square feet, which is bigger than that, but if it's a thousand, that's 2,300 watts or 2.3 kW. That's about um, ton and a half of load. So you switch the LED, you're going to be at uh, 0.5 watts per square foot. Uh, so it's considerably less about a third so it, that snowballs throughout your design I mean you, you, rather than a three ton you have two and a half ton or two ton in, in a classroom so and that lighting is already included in the, the new system or not <laughs> that lighting is not included it's a it's an option 
on that. And the lighting is not in the itemized piecemeal. That's that 232,000. So the lighting more. could be added to the one. piecemeal, um, which would change that, that bottom line by the amount shown. Probably change our fee a little bit. So you're you just so I understand that right. If we did the lighting, we would subtract some off of that total total amount either either plan. No, the, the lighting yeah. is standalone by itself. Yeah. But so the efficiency we would gain by installing those lightings, we could have a smaller system. Is that correct? Yeah. You're, you're you, you would go down in tonnage per classroom, and that would bring some of the cost down. That would bring probably offset it some. Yes. Okay. Plus, what's the life expectancy of an LED light fixture compared to the OS? Oh, you know, when they first come out, they lasted forever, but we're finding that isn't the case. The LEDs have, the, you know, they got better life than fluorescents by quite a bit. Um, but, you know, they're not, you know, everything that they said they were going to be. I mean, you, you still have problems. I mean, they still burn out. But at least double the fluorescents. Just if I might, you know, I don't know if the, the LED lighting would fall within the scope of ESSER 3. So you'd probably have to use some of your capital outlay funds to do a project like that. But that being said, you know, you're sitting here with, you know, almost 800000 in the bank today. Um, so you'd have more than enough to cover that if, if that's the direction you choose to go. Didn't you say on one of those options, though, that you would be replacing all of the tiling? That's in the, the last option. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the pricing, the, the general construction in, in the tile and ceiling is in that number, but the LED lighting is not in that. I understand that, but that would be the optimal time to oh, redo all of your lighting absolutely. is when you've got your ceilings torn apart. Yes, it, it, would, it would pay for itself in relatively short time, the LED lights. Spending that 230 whatever that number. Right. That pocket change. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, it is, you know, to, I think the school is about 116,000 square feet. So. All right. It's a lot of fluorescent lights going too, you know. And there is. Four bulbs in each. Does anyone have uh, principals? Do you have any? Superintendent? We've got, right now what we're doing is when we have panels go out and stuff, we're swapping out some of the fluorescent lights with LED lights. Is that the same thing or will the fixtures make a bigger difference also? Um, the, the swapping them out, you, you gain the energy and you, you, uh, you use less energy right. and they give off less heat. When you're swapping them out, you're essentially getting the gain that you would if you did them all. I mean, so. Okay. Yeah, because like our all, main hallways, I think those are almost all LEDs now in the high school. Um, the classrooms are not. Yeah. Yeah, the price of LEDs has gotten to, to the point where it makes absolutely no sense to go back in with the rest. Of them. Right. Well, thank you for the information. You're welcome. Thank you for coming. And we'll um, be in. If you got any questions, run it through Shane. And, you know, be more than happy to give an answer. Thank you. Sounds great. All right. Thank you all. Thank you. Next on our agenda, we added in the Trojan Learning Center. I'm going to have Mr. Pearl talk to us about that. Um, just want to uh, give an update that the uh, <coughs> Trojan Learning Center is uh, operational. It, it started uh, the latter part of March. We have uh, approximately 30 some kids um, there attending. We have a, a, a manager that was hired as well as two other staff people. So uh, we appreciate the, the school here trying to work with us on the food situation. Um, that one probably need a little more work on yet but um, but overall I uh, just wanted to make sure that the community knew that we're operational and um, 
it sounds like even toward uh, the beginning of next school season that that uh, enrollment there could even uh, improve on what wants to go there. So. Great, so great news. Thank you for the update. How many do you have now, John? Do you know? Around 30-ish. 30 30. And they're talking uh, maybe up to 40-ish next enrollment year. Nice. Yeah, that's all I had on that. Great, Just thank you. Update. All right, next on our agenda is COVID leave. So we weren't sure what to do with this, so we, we brought it back to you. Uh, if you recall, the first semester, uh, the federal government had COVID leave for us, um, required of us, so we, we provided that as, as prescripted by law. And then uh, come January, we talked about it some more, and we extended it on our own, on our own to February. That was what the motion read, yep. And then to the February meeting. And there wasn't anything since. Well, we, we didn't have any staff members come down with COVID until recently. So that's why we're bringing it back today. We can either just leave it as is, or I don't know if you want to consider something else, um, but th their option is, of course, if um, th they, they'd have to use sick leave to, to, uh, to get through that. And it was 10 days, they gotta be out. So you get 10 days a year, so it, it consumes your entire sick leave if, if uh, that's the case so we weren't sure how to proceed um, so we brought it to you to get your determination and we'll go whichever way you wish when we originally did that was there monies left over from other COVID funds that, that was used for that or we planned for that I, I don't know that we budgeted any COVID uh, any of the ESSER money to to compensate for that uh, I don't we, know we the CRF funds is what we were using because they didn't have to be tracked. So the CRF funds were those dollars provided by the state of South Dakota. The governor gave those to us. That was about two hundred and forty thousand dollars. So um, when you hear CRF, that's different than ESSER, but that was part of the whole stimulus that we've got. So there's probably some money there that you could probably still use if that was your wish. And your cost obviously is the substitute. That's that's the cost. My vote would be to just leave it as it is. If someone gets sick, I mean, everyone has now at least had the option to get vaccinated. You know, at this point, it's open to everyone. So they would just take their leave. When, when do the teachers get the second shot? Wednesday. So two weeks after that would be? Yep. Okay. The one situation has already happened. Right, 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 right. That's why we brought it. So what you're saying it was, it was only enough. approved through February? It was. Because that's and how so the motion read that to extend it through the February board meeting. So you're asking us if we want to extend it through March and April? It or not, or just leave it as is, yep. Or some sort of version of it. You don't have to do the whole thing like they did before. I mean, make them use so many sick days, whatever. That's. Right, see I'm a state employee and I was under that same bill. And so. Everybody was, yep. Now, my employees, any of us, we get COVID, we're burning our leave. Yeah. So out of that bucket of money, is there still money in there that you guys were? It's really not out of a bucket of money because we had nothing budgeted for it. No, but the money the that was given to us through the state, the fund that you talked about. Yeah, the CRF, there's, there was 272000 I misspoke. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm sure we haven't spent all of that. Um, and then we're going to get 65000 of additional one-time money from the state. So combined, there's about 330000 of additional state money coming. And then the, the total is almost $2.6 if you want to run them all together. But. Was there something specific that money, that fund, was supposed to be used for? Can the coronavirus that? relief fund? No. Anything we wanted? You don't have? Yep. Yeah. Oh. What happens with the uh, sick leave at the end of the school year? 
does it roll over or something go into the yes. retirement no not retirement or it goes into the their if they don't use it they get to keep their 10 days yeah right so they'll start next year with 10 more days or 20 days yep. or yep. they keep and that's where that's what the cost would be is the substitute for those additional days right and the teacher themselves doesn't pay that the school does no. so nobody's out anything the staff member if they don't have leave left in right. this situation right but depending they have, if, no they don't have enough to cover the first 10 days as well but I'm depending saying. on the staff member they could have depending on the staff of, member yes right. yes you are correct okay we can only get a max of 60 days and then any day above that i think is tell me if i'm wrong 15 or is it 25 25 no. bucks a day that's what 25 dollars a day so if, Once if so i'm at 65 at the end of this school year i get 25 dollars for those five days. days yep okay So that particular teacher had sick days to use? They have some, but not enough to, for the 10 day requirement because they're a first year teacher. So what happens then is they get pay deduct and that's at their daily rate of pay, which is probably- Two to $300, depending on the teacher. A day. This is probably like this, a first year teacher is probably about 225, 230, something like that a day. So since we didn't come back to it, and we hadn't really addressed it. I guess my feeling is that we have, we have to kind of go with the what it was since we did, we haven't talked about it. Well, we did talk about it last month and we said uh, that it didn't apply to anybody. So we didn't. In January you talked right. about it. Right. So we didn't. You haven't talked about it since January. Right, so we. But we extended it through February, right? Through the February board. Yeah, board. yeah. That's but how then, the motion was read. And then we was that we were going to talk about it again, or what was it? That that's all the motion. Well, that's how the motion was stated. Oh, to continue through the. I think what happened, Joe, was there wasn't anybody cases. Cases, so. and we we just kind of didn't think about it at yeah. that point when there weren't any cases to bring it back in February. Yep. Yeah. And it didn't come about until we had a case. Some schools did extend it through the school year. Others didn't. If we were to extend it uh, through April, that would get everybody through um, both rounds of shots plus two weeks. Um, and after that, I wouldn't see any need for it at all. Um, I don't know, to me it makes sense if we have the money available, I mean, to extend it. I mean, if we can help this person out, why wouldn't we if we had money available to do it for this COVID leave? And if, if they actually contracted COVID, that's what it's for. And as far as the total expenditure that it's gonna cost you as a district going forward, um, if you did do it through April, or, yeah, half of April or whatever, maybe just go through this shot day, I don't know. The person, it's not going to affect next year. So you don't have to worry about carrying over the days or anything like that. Maybe. In that specific situation? In this specific situation. Well, Does we that really sense? shouldn't specifically be talking about anybody no, not having the leave or having the leave. The yeah. fact that they got sick, regardless of what it was for, you know, they exhausted their leave or they didn't have leave carried over. So for s somebody else, they easily could have had 60 days or 20 days or, and it would, was a mute point. We shouldn't make a decision because we know now that somebody would be losing, would actually having to be paid, pay money back because they don't have any reserve sick leave. So, but it's a mute point because we're just going round and round. So we really just need to vote on it. Um, so as far as the COVID leave, all in favor of extending the COVID leave through April? 
or do you want to do it just to the end of the school year? I think we do it two weeks. I agree with you. It's two weeks past shots. And to me, that makes sense. I mean, you, you can choose to get it or not get it, and then, then after that, it's kind of your decision. And that's so the way I look at it. Can we legally discriminate someone for not having gotten the shot? It's their choice. It's not a discrimination. They can choose yeah, to get it or not. Yeah, but we are if we're making a ruling based on two weeks after they've gotten the second shot if they chose to get it, and those who didn't get it and they get COVID, then they have to use leave. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And we need to make sure that we're not setting any kind of definitive line based on that. Well, I don't think it'd be any different than the flu shot every year. I mean, everybody has the option to get a flu shot. If, yeah, but uh, there's no flu leave. If someone got sick with flu, whether they got a shot or not, they're burning their sick leave. Right. So do we just go to the end of the year? Or do you want to go two, two weeks? It's two more weeks. I mean, May 15th or May 18th is the end of the day. You know, okay. So it's not like it's... it's I just don't want to open this up for criticism from the public and more outrage with the whole COVID thing. Yeah, it may not be worth the headache. Yeah, I okay. just don't think it would be. Okay, I'm fine with that. Good. So we need a motion? Yep, we need a motion. All those in favor of extending COVID leave to the end of the year, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Nay. I need a motion. Nobody made. John made a motion. Who seconded? I'll make the motion. I can second it. Okay. Vote four to one. Motion carried. All right. Next on our agenda is the transgender policy executive order from Governor Nome's office. Right, so I, I uh, included that in your packet. As you know, Governor Nome um, executed an executive order uh, regarding uh, schools and the requirement to have transgender policy uh, in regard to uh, females and um, competing in different things. So with that, we've also got um, feedback from the Associated School Boards the school administrators and the Activity Association saying that we shouldn't do that. So, um, you know, I don't, you know, looking for a legal, what, what should you follow, what shouldn't you follow? Um, you know, I ran that past your attorney just because I wanted his opinion and, and he thought our approach would be good. Go ahead and introduce things tonight. Next month, we will bring you a transgender policy per the executive order. Hopefully by then uh, we'll get some information from the associate school boards and the school administrators and the activity association. We can introduce the policy next month, uh, which is May. June, you can have a second reading and hopefully by July when you would adopt it, you would have something concrete from one of those organizations. That's my plan. I don't know if it's a good plan or not, but that's the plan. I say um, that sounds like a great plan. That way we're trying to follow through with the governor's executive order, but yet buying yourselves a little time to see what happens with uh, with these others. Because, the, you know, the Activity Association is saying they already have something in place. Why do they have to have more in place? And, well, that's you know, what I was going to suggest, to push it so, down as far as we can until we have to meet the deadline. Yeah. And if you had to, you could table it then, too, if you wanted, if, if necessary. But, you know, I think you should move forward and... Uh, next month we bring you a policy to to introduce. Do we need to vote or anything? No, that's just kind of the information and that's acceptable with the board, that's what we'll do. Yes. Everyone agree? Okay. Next on our agenda is board election. Uh, the seats held by Jim Mahoney and Barb McKean are up for election this year. We did receive one petition. Um, from Jed Schoenfelder um, and as a result uh, we will not be holding an election uh, to 
fill the vacant seat in the near future, the board will need to consider an appointment for a one-year term. So if anyone is interested, please submit your letter to Craig Bruning, the business manager at the Parkston School, for consideration to fill a one-year vacant seat on the school board. Next under action items is to approve the claims. Those with conflicts of interest. Do we have any? No? Two, BJ school busing um, for 30,770.52 in the city of Parkston for 458.01. Okay. A motion, a motion to, to approve. approve those. So move. Second. Move by election, second by Mahoney. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The keen abstaining, right? Yes. Okay. Motion carried. All right. Um, 10B is tabled items for the 2021 school calendar for makeup days. So we need a motion to take that off the table. Moved by Leishner. I'll second it. Second by Prohol. Okay. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. So, what would you like to do with those days? I mean, there's, there's, you can have, you can make up both of them, you can make up neither of them, you could have teachers come for one and not the other, you could have um, so the, the law says we have to have so many contact hours and we, we far exceed that so it's it's not a matter of whether or not we're required by law it's just a matter of what you guys want to do um, in terms of contact time with with uh, with the students um, I guess I think it's been it's been a trying year for staff and, and uh, those days are going to make a big difference? Probably not. Uh, but it's your wish. Uh, those teachers are contracted for those two days. Um, so whatever you guys want to do. And in the normal schedule, they are contracted for a, a work day at the end of the year to that or no? No, no, typically not. No, Matt. The, the last day of, with the kids is usually their last day as well. Okay. Is anything done at the end of the year um, for the teachers to kind of clean up, clean out the classrooms for summer projects for custodians? Well, what, you know, what we'd like to see them do is update inventories and, and things of that nature so that um, all of that is up to date. Um, yeah, I think we'd have them prepare their rooms and get everything organized so that custodians can come in and, and do what they do, um, finish any kind of grading that they need to do, get report cards out, uh, that kind of stuff would be kind of a work day um, clean up if that's what you want to do with them at the end. Yeah, I really don't see a need to bring the kids back. I think I would agree that they're they're checked out and done after graduation. Um, but you know, your, your teachers don't really ever get the opportunity to just have time to do what they need in their room. So maybe bringing them in and letting them you know they're already contracted for it you know that way they're not feeling like they're not getting something out of it but they won't have their kids with them this way they can spend that time you know finishing their school year you know their books grading and cleaning up their rooms so those custodians don't have such a difficult time going in there and clearing stuff to do carpets and paint as we all know what some of those classrooms look like at the end of the year. So you say I'm bring staff back for a day, let the kids loose. No. Well, well uh, that would be my recommendation. What does the board think? I'm fine with that. Yeah, your, let, let your the students winter. go and bring the teachers back. What are grades do for you here, for the teachers? Um, 
you know, it kind of depends on the situation. If that's the case, I would have them due at the end of the work day. <coughs> on the 19th, then? Yeah. On the end. If, if it's one work day, if it's two work days, then we would go that way. But if it's just the one, because, and I would tell them that. Normally, at the end of the year, they do a pretty good job of trying to stay ahead of the curve. But, um, you know, it always takes a little bit of time, especially for the ones that have. Um, and that goes with putting books away and all that because everything gets turned in on those last day or two. So um, they do stay pretty busy in that time frame and then it also gives us a chance if we have any other whoops, uh, conversations we need to have with the staff. So, you know, part of our observation times and that kind of stuff. So the one day should be enough. Yeah. Okay. Yep. We need a motion. We need a motion to amend the school calendar to uh, have staff make up May 19th as a work day, and students will not make up either lost day. Um, do we want them to make up two days or just the one? You don't feel any need I for two? One's, one's adequate, I think. Okay. Yeah. All right, so we need a motion. I will make that motion, Craig, of the missing kids as of the 18th and the staff comes in on the 19th. Okay. okay. So, is Prol moved? Second? I'll second it. Second by Mahoney. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. So, the last day is the 18th? The students' last day will be May 18th with the teachers. Um, last day being May 19th for the teacher work day. All right. All right, next is the adoption um, of Title IX policy. Yep. Enclosed, you'll find the draft policy. And we, this is our second reading? The final reading. Our final reading. Yep. Yep. No changes were made from last reading. Okay. So, um, hearing that, if Nobody has any additional questions on the final reading or changes. I'll entertain a motion to approve. So second. I'll second it, Kirk. Mm -hmm. Moved by Neil and second by Paul to approve the Title IX policy as presented. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Both right. same sign. Motion carried. Thank you. Um, in the packet was the board ballot the ASB SD ballot enclosed you'll find um, the ballot with the cast for one candidate there are two names currently on it yep we got Tom Farrell of Madison Central School District and Carol Voss Ward from the Vermilion School District uh, do you have any recommendation yeah I, I've uh, Tom Farrell's been um, involved in education for a, a number of years, and I believe he's been in this position before. I know he's been in the uh, um, Madison School District for a number of years, and he also was teacher at uh, Dakota State, where I think that's where I first met him. Um, so if you want my recommendation, I, he's a good person, good man. I think he'd be a good choice. All right. All in, um, in favor of voting in Tom, is that what you're yep. Tom Farrell. Tom Farrell, and, um, say aye. 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 All right, so then we just need a motion to approve. I think he, I think he just did, didn't he? Well, we didn't have a motion. At yeah, all. I okay. just wanted to make sure we were all on the same page. Okay. So I'll take a motion to approve. So moved. In a second. Second. Moved by Lashon, second by Mahoney, the vote for Tom Farrell for the Madison School District for the ASBSD Board of Directors position. For the schools with enrollment of 713.99. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Both same sign. Motion carried. All right. Um, next, um, we will go into executive session. Negotiations. For negotiations. It's 734. Take a five minute recess.